Hello and welcome back to Gordon Legal. I'm John Fain and I've been asked to try and explain some of the complexities of robo-debt and the litigation with partners from Gordon Legal and we have another special guest for you for today's podcast as well. Andrew Gregg, thank you Hi, very John. much for joining us. Can you tell us the litigation that's now underway and there was a mediation that was reported in the daily media the other day. Where did it get to and what are the, the hurdles still to cross? Well, as in all mediations, there was a good exchange of, of views, as they say, but it didn't result in a conclusion of the proceedings. And so since then, the court has had us back for a case management conference and the case has been fixed for trial. So the trial of the proceedings will commence on the 21st of September this year, which is a pretty quick time frame for a case of this size and scale. It's been set down for three weeks. Um, after that, his honour will no doubt take some time to consider the evidence and the legal arguments that are put before him. Um, and we'd hope to get a judgment from his honour um, by the end of the, the, the calendar year. Is there that much distance between the parties? Any mediation, people give and take a little bit? How far apart are you? Well, well you'll know that prior to the mediation, the government made a number of announcements. One of those important announcements was that it would pay back 721 million, you know, three quarters of a billion dollars, approximately three quarters of the total amount that it's taken from people under the robo-debt scheme. So that was a very significant announcement and that in itself narrowed many of the issues in dispute. But what the government remains silent about really is whether it will pay interest and compensate people um, who've been through some really extraordinary cases of hardship as a result of the application of what we say and believe we can prove is an unlawful scheme. It's an essential ingredient of any mediation that it remained confidential, but are you able to give us even any hint of where the parties are compared to each other? Well, certainly what's on the public record, because there was, after the mediation, a case management hearing in which the Commonwealth... Which means what? What's a case, case management? Case management hearing is a directions hearing where you go before the judge and tell him where you're up to in the proceedings and ask him to make orders to program the next steps in the case. So you say, look, we want 50,000 documents, all this list That's here, right. and then we have to have That's time right, to go John. through and them all. That's right, John. There's been a, a very you know, substantial argument about documents, as you can appreciate being a lawyer yourself. Um, the, the Commonwealth has claimed privilege in respect to some of those, those documents. That is, it says that there's a public interest in them not disclosing those documents. That'll have to go before another judge for that judge to determine whether they've made out their claims for, for privilege on the, on the grounds of public interest. So there's an argument to be had a trial within the trial. That's right. And, and that's not unusual in cases of this kind. We expect that to take place over the next few weeks. We've already got a substantial volume of documents from them, but there's more that we want. And it's fair to say that the more documents uh, we get, the more we become interested in some of the steps and decisions the government took. Most class actions settle. That's true. Do you think this one will? It's always possible. Um, our clients um, remain of the view that we should keep the door open and we've made that clear to the government. How do you um, find out what your clients' instructions are, given there's how many now? How many have we got on the books? So there are something like, in general terms, about 617,000 people who are covered by the definition of the class. So that's the total potential that's base. right. But there, you've got how many on your books? There are about 60,000 people who've registered with Gordon Legal. It's really important to understand that in Australia, class action class actions operate as, a, as an opt-out system. So you're in unless you opt out. And so even if you're not on the books at Gordon Legal, you are still likely that's right. to get some benefit. That's right. So why would you need to be on the books? What advantage is there in being on the books? I think the main advantage is that unless you register, we don't know who you are, and so we can't keep you informed of developments. And it also does assist us in prosecuting the case because the more people we're able to be in touch with, the more stories we can hear. It's really important for us that we give the court a good appreciation of the breadth of people's circumstances. So the more people that contact us, the more we can become aware of the totality of, of ways in which this has impacted people. And that'll be really essential when we come to demonstrating to the court how this has impacted people. I mean, these are real people, often in very vulnerable situations. It's very important the court gets a really great appreciation of just the damage that's been done here. And there was a call in our last discussion Peter Gordon offered to the Commonwealth that if an apology was made, it would not be used in the proceedings. It would be quarantined from the proceedings. And although there was a few days of refusing, eventually in Parliament, 
Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister, did make an apology. Does that have any bearing on the litigation? It doesn't have any bearing in the sense of it, it, it's not admissible in evidence in the trial. We've made that clear and we wanted to open the door to that to relieve the government really from what we thought was an excuse about not doing the right thing. Um, I think our clients have made it really clear to us that when you do the wrong thing, the first thing you should do is make it clear that you're sorry that you have and then you need to address the harm that flows from that. We want to commend the government for that. We think it's a good thing. We think it's the appropriate thing for them to do. Now it's time to really step up and right the wrong. Will the public get to see what happens in court? Yeah, so hopefully in Australia, cases like this are opened, are in open court. So people are welcome to, to come to court. Well, you can't it's have 70,000 or 700,000 right, people That's right, so there are some practical limitations on that. It's unusual for the court to televise the court proceedings, but it's not unprecedented, and it may be that the court decides to do that. That's something the, the court would have to do on its own initiative, but it's certainly been done in the past. Would it be something that, on behalf of the plaintiffs, the, the class, you would ask the court to do? We, we think it's really important that the whole community of people that have been affected by this get a real opportunity to understand what's going on. One of the big problems is that there's been so much information from the government, Centrelink in particular, about A, what they did, and then secondly, what they're, they're seeking to do to address it. So yeah, we, we think it's a great idea that people be have an opportunity to see justice being done, see the, the machinery of justice in, in, in progress.